we want to honor God because He sees everything. You were born with a plan and a purpose. He's the God of all things possible. He's the God of all miracles. Grace, Grace with Nina Michelle. I'm Michelle Humphreys. And I am Nina Keegan. Welcome to our broadcast today. Today we're going to be talking all about the thief on the cross. And, you know, how does this thief on the cross fit into your theology? You know, I, all, I get asked this a lot. Like, what do you mean he just got to go to heaven the same day? And I'm thinking, you know, here he is on the cross. There's no fog machines, fancy church, church <laughs> clothes, mission trips. No baptism. You know, he, You're not baptized. You, you didn't know, get he, baptized. All of these things. There's no donuts, coffee. There's no, you know, worship music. There's nothing. And he couldn't even bend his knee or fold his hands to pray. And yet he walked into heaven the very hour Jesus did. He just walked straight into heaven because he recognized him and he believed in him. And he said, remember me, remember me when you enter your kingdom. He on the cross, the very last second of his life, he was able to recognize Jesus, his need for Jesus. And yet it, it, he saw that when the other guy, the other, the third cross, the other person, hanging on the cross, was still mocking Jesus, was still blasphemy, was still all of that. So, you know, what is the difference? What happened? What happened to him that caused him to be repentant and to be able to walk in to heaven that very moment? It's amazing that. And we're gonna talk about that today. I love that. Well, yeah. I, well here's what happened, I think. Mm -hmm. I mean, not yep. that I have the answer here, but the Bible says that, that the, uh, the thief that repented mm -hmm. had a reverence for God. Yeah. It, the, the Bible says that the beginning of wisdom is a reverential fear of God. Yeah. So on one side of Jesus, hanging on a cruel cross was a thief and he deserved to be on that cross. They both did. And on the other side was a thief and he deserved to be on that cross. So they both were sinners. But the thief on the cross that the Bible says that Jesus looked at him and said, today you'll be with me in paradise. Why did Jesus say that to him and not him? You know, because one was scoffing and mocking him and had no fear of God. And the other one realized his need for a savior. Yeah. And it is, not, I don't care what you do. If you are a monk, if you beat yourself to try to be right with God, like Martin Luther, you know, Martin Luther used to walk on his knee. He would, he would like crawl on his knees. He would beat his back. He thought that he could, uh, you earn know, his earn his way mm -hmm. to, to God. There's no way to earn it. And the thief on the cross is, cross is proof that you cannot earn your way to heaven. You cannot. Now, Faith without works is dead. So if you have some time before you before you die to serve the Lord, you you need to have works. But that thief is witness to all of us that you do not have to do one thing except to have a reverential fear of God, be sorry for your sins, and accept Jesus as Savior. Well, he recognized him yep. as Savior and his need for a Savior. And, you know, it wasn't about ego or arrogance. You know, there's so many people that think they're all fine with God. And, and I say all the time, you know, there's, there's that scripture that says many will fall away. Many will fall away and that the highway to hell is very wide and the, the roadway to hell is the narrow gate. And so many people who think they got this thing all figured out and they might know a few church words or go to church on Easter and Christmas, I'm telling you, 
that it is about a repentance. It is about a recognizing that Jesus is Lord of your life and a savior. And if what you have is not causing your heart to turn, it's not causing your heart to want to do better. And, and, and if it's not, have, you're not having gentle convictions from the Lord, that are just like, you know, that's not right. Don't say that, don't do that. You know, those are those gen gentle convictions that are causing us to live in a new level of holiness. You know, this man did not do anything but recognize that he was a criminal. He was a thief. He was repentant and in need of a savior and recognized Jesus as a man. He, it says on there that he said, this man, this man did nothing wrong. This man has done nothing wrong. And he was saying, remember me, remember me. And so just think about the panic and the urgency that he had in his heart to know, you know, once he finally figured it out, I'm sorry, remember me. Don't, don't, don't let me be thrown in hell. You know, this is, this is the urgency that God wants us to live out our lives with to be with our oils, our oil ready in the lamps. We never know what day Jesus is coming back, but are you ready? Are you ready? Are we prepared? Like the, the, the thief on the cross, you know, again, just recognizing we can't do anything without our savior. Apart from him, we can do nothing. And we are in so need of a savior. And yes, and that's what he recognized. Yeah. He recognized that without this this man, Jesus, who he knew had done nothing wrong. He, he recognized him as the sinless sacrifice. There is no repentance or forgiveness without blood. That's right. what the Bible says. And Jesus shed his blood on that cross, his powerful blood on that cross. And that thief recognized that that blood was all he needed to be saved. He did not have time to go out and get baptized. He did not have time to do good works. He did not have time to do anything but acknowledge that Jesus Christ is Lord. And, and he bowed his heart to Jesus that day. And he and Jesus in response, knowing the heart of men, man looks on the outside and everybody around that thief was going, yeah, you deserve it. But Jesus saw his heart and he saw through all of the sin and he knew that that blood was powerful enough to forgive him and that day, the Bible says he was in paradise. Can you so when it's we, I love that. You know, when you lose a loved one that knew Jesus, you can know the Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present from the Lord. And that's a scripture that will comfort you if you've just lost someone. Because when, when that thief closed his eyes on this earth, he opened his eyes to paradise, yeah. to eye has not seen nor ear heard the things that God has prepared for those who love him. What are you waiting for? Jesus is the sacrifice that you need to make it to heaven. You don't have to work yourself to death or beat your back. Jesus is all you need. Yes. That's it. And we are gonna talk more about that when we come right back. Stay right there. You're watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to ninaandmichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back to the program, Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. Today we're talking about the thief on the cross and how does that all work? How does this guy who was literally a thief, a, a, 
you know, doing crimes and, and, you know, here he is hanging on the cross next to Jesus and yet recognizes his need for a savior and repenting right then and there and asking him, asking Jesus to remember him that day. And he did. And he walked into paradise the same day as Jesus. And, you know, there's people ask me all the time. There's so many people that have suffered great atrocities and in some of our prayer requests and some of the things that we get in our social media and on our website of people asking for prayer. And so many of them is, is unforgiveness towards somebody who has really gone through something. Maybe it's been some kind of, you know, sexual molestation, child abuse, rape. There's been awful, awful things, divorce, betrayal. And how can I forgive them? How can I forgive them? And all I can think of is that there are many, many people in this world that we are, are in religions, are in countries that are really not allowed to read the word or have the word or see the word. And they're, they're taught certain things like that, that if, you, if you do these atrocities, you'll, you'll, you'll be blessed when you die and all of these kinds of things. And so I think that from a perspective of, of if you were that person, if you were somebody who didn't yet receive God, that you didn't know the word, that you weren't allowed to hear the word, or you didn't recognize the word, or you were so, so hurt by things that you just believed there was no God, because why would a God allow you to be hurt like that? And all I'm here to tell you is, is that if you were one of these people and then you finally recognized that there is a, a God there that loves you, would you, how would you feel if it was too late? How would you feel if that was like, but I, I already lived all this life now and now it's too late. I should have been doing all these great works to be able to get into heaven and it's really not about that. When you are able to recognize Jesus as your Lord and Savior and your need for a Savior, you repent of your sins, you repent and turn away of your sins. Behold, he makes all things new. And then you get to start over. You get to start from that standpoint. And you are no longer a victim of your past hurts, a, a victim of your sins. You get to move forward from that day on. God gives you that second chance through the blood of his son, Jesus Christ. And that's why the slate is there for all of us, no matter where we are. So many people, Michelle, think they're Christians and think they're fine. And yet they're living in sin and they think they're fine. And, they do. They and, have a self-righteousness. Yeah. Instead of having that thief on the cross mentality of realizing I'm a sinner. Yeah. And I need a savior. And until you have that aha moment, until the Holy Spirit reveals that to you, you have not been saved. All you've done is show up at a church or you've read a Bible or you've you know, said a couple of prayers, but your heart, you know, as I'm saying this, yes. that your heart does not know Jesus. The Bible says that our spirit bears witness with His Holy Spirit that we are His children. It says that my sheep know my voice. Mm -hmm. So if you are not experiencing the presence of God, the, the relationship with Jesus, then I encourage you right now. In fact, I am begging you to rethink, am I really saved? Am I saved? And if you're not, then I want you today to make sure that just like that thief on the cross that you say, Jesus, you're the only way I'm getting heaven. That is it. It's the blood. He's the only, the blood, he, the Bible says he is the way. He is the truth. He is the life. And without him, there's no other way to heaven. Mm -hmm. No other way. You can be good. You can be a priest. You can be a preacher. You can be someone who spends day and night in a church and still not know Jesus because you've never ever decided that you were in need of a savior. You're trying to be your own savior by being good. Mm -hmm. And that is never going to be enough because Jesus paid the price of the torture of a cross. He died on a cross so that you could be saved. Why would God have to do that? If you could be good enough, there's no way. Right? Yeah, let me just tell you, I, I know someone who recently attended a funeral 
of, uh, of someone they worked with and hadn't seen in years, but that this person was a professed atheist. And when this person attended the funeral, they said it was just dark that God wasn't mentioned anywhere, that it was just darkness. And so think about that. Think about somebody who would have lived their whole life. And supposedly this person was a very nice person, was just a very, very nice person. And, and so, they did good deeds. And so you think about that, that isn't gonna get you to heaven. That is not, the thief on the cross was not a nice person. He, 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 did, he didn't, as far as we know, really do a whole lot of good things at all. He, he was stealing, he was a thief. And so, it's not about that. And think about that. When I was told this story, I thought, oh, the darkness. And you could just imagine that and just think about everyone in there and the family and how that, that whole thing is going down. And it's like, I thought about, we don't know what happened on the deathbed of this person or whatever. We don't know if something- They could it, have been safe. It, it, at the it, end. You know, we don't. But uh, all I'm saying is, is that if that person didn't make a change and didn't didn't become saved we know that he knows the truth now you know and so so we have to just know what would his sermon be today yeah and so you know that's the thing if 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 the dead if if the dead knew if if we knew what the dead know like you know what i mean yeah like who wouldn't be running to Jesus? And so w here's what I'm saying. It's like time is too short to get this wrong. You don't know what's gonna happen. There are just atrocities happening every day. There's been, you know, there's things that you could just be in a, a car accident. You know, how many days do we pass car accidents on the freeways? And you don't have a lot of time. You don't know what day your number is up to get this wrong. You know, you there there are is one way, one way to heaven, and that is Jesus Christ. That is giving Him your life. It is recognizing Him as your Lord and Savior. It is knowing your need for a Savior and repenting of your sins and turning away from that and asking God to heal you, uh, uh, to deliver you, and just to, just to tell Him you wanna live for Him and you want your life to be changed. Give your life to the Lord today. You don't know what's coming. And so we're gonna talk more about that when we come right back. You are watching Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. Stay right there. The world needs to be reached with the message of Jesus. And that is the mission of Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle to see people's lives change with the saving power of Jesus Christ. When you donate to Grace Grace Ministries, you're also reaching orphans and the underprivileged throughout the world, as well as the United States. The Bible says that when we help the least, the forgotten and the overlooked, we have done something for Jesus himself. Will you be a part of what God is doing to help those in need and those who are hungering to hear the real message of Jesus? Give today by logging on to NinaAndMichelle.com or text the word GIVE to 325-603-3354. You can also send in a check to 6315B FM 1488 Road, number 122, Magnolia, Texas 77354. Grace Grace Ministries is a 501c3 charitable organization. Gifts are tax deductible, so join us in the Great Commission today. Give now. Welcome back to Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle. Today we're talking about the thief on the cross. We're talking about the thief on the cross that actually accepted Jesus as his savior and Jesus himself told the thief on the cross who is unnamed, today you will be with me in paradise. And wouldn't that just feel so great? You know, you can know that you're saved. You can know that you're saved. You just have to have you have to recognize your need for a savior, your need for the blood that was shed on that cross. And you know, sometimes people can be blinded and, and, it, and, and you don't realize that you, you have a need for a savior. I remember visiting a patient um, at, at his bedside and I knew his past. I knew his past. It was wretched. It was evil and wicked. And I went to this old, old man and I said, you know, we knew he was dying. And I said, um, 
would you like to be saved and forgiven for, do you need to repent of anything? And, you know, I knew, I knew he needed to repent. I knew he needed Jesus. And he said, uh, he, he had a little bit of an accent and he said, baby, I never did anything wrong. And I was like, oh my God. There you go. Oh my God, please <laughs> reveal to him his need for a savior. Sometimes that need for a savior is not revealed. So if you don't have any feelings and you feel like you don't have need for a savior, I'm encouraging you today to ask the Lord. It says, it says today, if you hear his voice, do not harden your heart yeah. because today is the day of salvation. We could leave this place today and get in a wreck or have a heart attack or have something happen and we will have crossed a threshold where we are in our, our permanent and eternal destination. And if we have not said, just like that thief on the cross, that we need a savior, that it's only by the blood of Jesus that we can be saved, then we will have crossed into either hell or we will cross into heaven depending on our choice. And today is that day. Well, and that, here's the thing. If you're, if you're sitting there going, I don't do anything wrong and I don't, you know, yeah. you know, our thoughts come from one of two places. And, you know, whatever's good, whatever is, is, is kind and, and, and gentle, that's the Lord, your thoughts, the good thoughts. But, you know, all the arrogance and, and, and the, the evil thought, I'm fine, I don't need that. Like that, that is prideful and haughtiness. You know, that's not coming from God. You know, I, I feel like sometimes like, I get uh, the gentle conviction, like it's everything. Like I could be in a store, a clothing store, where there's like clothes like that fell off the rack and I'll just kind of walk by and I will literally hear the Holy Spirit say, pick that up. I'm, and I wanna say, but I didn't put it on the ground. Like, you know, like, <laughs> it's like I almost, but it's like, I feel like when you walk in a new level of holy, I'm not saying, trust me, we, I, you know, every day I'm in a need of a savior, but I feel like I listen to the little things, bringing your cart back. If it's raining, if I have high shoes on, I always want to bring my cart back. You know, when you are faithful in the small stuff, you know, when you hear God and listen to his voice in those little things, it matters because then you're hearing him in the big things. You know, you don't want to miss God on anything. I want to live so close to him that I'm constantly hearing his voice over every little thing. And I know myself, like if you're ever upset about something or mad about something and I, and you and I will talk because we'll be praying and we'll say, and I'll say, you know, and they'll say, never mind. I'm just going to, I'm just going to shut up right now. And I know that's not <laughs> that polite of a word, but I want, I don't want to speak the problem. I don't want to say things. I don't want to do anything uh, with your tongue. Like you don't want to go outside of what God has for you. We have to live with a new level of holiness by asking the Lord Jesus himself into our lives to create in us a clean heart, oh God, and to show us where we need to have something change, pluck out things, take and remove from me things that are not good, that are, that are maybe in my heart where I've let my heart be hardened over something. And that's where you need to go because sometimes when you do that, you have now stepped away and walked away through a hardness and it's hard to hear from the Lord. So be grateful if he's telling you to pick something up or exactly. put something back or do something right because that's you hearing from the Lord. And when you practice that, you're gonna hear him in all of the big things too. Exactly, and if right now while we're speaking, you hear his voice and, and, and God is drawing you, then that is the Holy Spirit. And, and the Bible says, no man comes to the Father unless he's drawn. Yeah. And so if you feel that urgency, then we are encouraging you right now to pray. Yeah, because he's, God is, is his word is truth. He, he means what he says. And when he says there's only one way, then we need to know and understand that that is that is the truth and there is only one way to heaven and we're gonna pray and give you an opportunity to make sure that you know that you will be in paradise with Jesus when Amen. you die. And if you're a young person and you think I've got all the time in the world, no, you don't. Nobody knows that. You may, but you might not. So 
we're asking you today, if you hear his voice right now, pray with us. Yeah. Lord Jesus, come on, let's pray. Lord Jesus, I believe that you died on the cross. I believe that you rose from the dead and I believe that I need you as my savior because I cannot make it to heaven without you. And just like that thief on the cross, I say, Jesus is the Messiah. And, and I know that as of now, because you are Lord, I am going to go to paradise to be with you. I am going to get to go to heaven all throughout eternity. From this moment on, I will be born again. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. We have to remember our life here on earth is like a vapor. It is gone, but think about eternity, which is infinite. Billions and billions and billions of years that you will get to spend with Jesus, with the in, in the heavenly realm, with our Lord and Savior Jesus well, and Christ. And think about the thief. You know, the Bible says thousands upon thousands and 10,000s upon 10,000 of angels are saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord who was and is and is to come. And you know what? That thief is joining in with them. Yeah, Isn't that amazing? Worshiping the Lord. And so it's not too late. Repent and turn from your sins. We invite you guys to just head over to our social media, Grace Grace with Nina and Michelle, Nina Keegan Ministries, all on Facebook and Instagram. Daily devotions there filled with the Word of God to encourage you. Also, stay tuned. You are not going to want to miss this exciting message from Daryl Youngblood. What a powerful ministry. And I'm telling you, you will be blessed by it. So stay tuned. We love you guys. God bless. Love you. Does science disprove God? Is there a war between science and faith? We don't need God to create a universe. There's no evidence for God, and it's irrational. Is there no evidence for God? Am I delusional for my beliefs? It is delusional and stupid. Am I brainwashed? Do I ignore reason? Logic. Critical thinking. Science. RDOF uses logic and reasoning. RDOF has empowered my sons to defend their faith with facts. If you want to be equipped to defend against the biggest objections to the existence of God, RDOF is the place for you. Has science really ruled out God? Is faith at war with science? If you want to be equipped to respond to these claims and more, check out RDOF.org. The evidence he presents is so powerful and overwhelming. Incredibly compelling, yet easily understandable. We believe in rationality, we believe in reason, we believe in science, and we believe in the existence of God. I would leave every event with a mind-boggling awe and assurance. I never believed in God. I just think it was craziness. RDOF confirmed my faith. RDOF confirmed my uh, full belief, full faith in the Lord, man. The appearance of design in the universe is undeniable. The lights, the crowd, the videos. To book a presentation or watch our free videos, go to rdof.org or find us on Facebook at RDOF Events.